<laughs> Hello and welcome back to All the Mods 7 to the Sky. I've done a little bit between episodes, a little bit more building, tidying up. I built that little draw wall thingy up there. Just use the standard controller. Same thing, you just need to link these ones up. Um, it's not called draws anymore, um, it's called something else, but basically draws and redone. Uh, did make a pulverizer, did follow the quest line a little bit in the last episode, but it was all like bleh, so I cut it all out and uh, yeah, it's um, just sitting over there. So it's not overly fantastic, it's, the, it's, it's just a pulverizer from Thermal. Since it's new update from 1.14, it's um, nowhere near as, uh, as good as they used to be. Um, but in that case, they're still good. Um, if you've got other things like mechanism in the pack, of course they get um, they get thoroughly tranced by something like mechanism. And I went ahead and made uh, a little bit of the power mod, um, so I can upgrade these bad boys. So they're now all on hardened level, or producing 200 FE per tick. And the next level will be blazing. Um, we just need a little bit more blaze powder, which I think is a great way to sort of help set that up get a couple of these set up and then our blaze powder will be taken care of or really dude he's selling a beacon over there that bloke what if it's the same dude where are you beacon for 25 emeralds i don't think i've ever seen one of those on a trader anyway distraction over um we can get blaze rods going to the nether and finding a fortress because i believe they still spawn even though it's a void world um, or we can use, um, I think, Britannia. Yeah, a fell pumpkin. You put a fell pumpkin on top of some iron bars and it creates a blaze that guarantees to drop blaze rods. So we can do that over and over and over again if we need to, to get some blaze rods. Um, or you just use four blaze powder in the machine and it turns it into. But I have planted a lot of pumpkins just in case I wanted to go down that way. Just in case. But as you saw from that little uh, adventure over there to see the trader, I have uh, built a few of these guys out here. And uh, oh yeah, I put the guy down. He actually landed this time, which is you know, the plan all along. And I've built another room out this way and out that way and decorated our bedroom a little. Uh, but nothing special in these rooms yet. Uh, this goes up to our wall up the top. And this was just to help with sieving because... Everything is just getting way too much. Um, yeah. So there we have it. And these planks are just um, the old industrial wood slab from Engineer's Decor. Bit of charcoal, some wood, and it turns it into this one, which looks very similar to treated wood planks. Um, so that's what I used. What I also did over this side as well is I took away the cobblestone gen and replaced it with the netherrack gen. So basically cobblestone in, one piece of cobblestone equals 250 millibuckets of lava. So you would need it to smelt four items to get a bucket. Netherrack, one netherrack equals one bucket. So you're basically timesing your lava production by four because it still smelts one netherrack down at the same speed. So nice little trick there with this bad boy. Once you get netherrack up and running, switch out your cobble gen. Increases it by four times the speed. Underneath here soon, we will definitely be switching those bad boys out for superheating elements. And then if we need to later on, if we need to continue that path of power gen, we will switch it out with dark matter blocks because they are a little faster. So a dark matter block. Oh, that's a dark matter furnace. There's a dark matter block. Here's in a crucible. It's 100 times speed, whereas the block we have under it at the moment is 20 and a heating element is 60. This one's 100 times, so... Super fast lava production if we need it. Uh, went ahead and moved our furnaces over and just basically made them automatic and smelted up a whole heap of stuff. So basically chuck it up in there, goes into the furnace, comes out the front. Nice and easy basic setup, nothing too flash. Alrighty, what I wanted to get into today is jumping straight into mechanism getting into the metallurgic infusers, and I want to get into the inscribers so we can finally start getting into AE2 and get some digital storage to make things a bit quicker, a bit easier to find everything. And then we can start really increasing our production through our sieves and hammers, 
and even get the other block from X Machinist, which is a compactor. We make another draw controller and have a cable coming from each sieve. And maybe out of a, into a chest and then all those chests will export into a draw controller and fill it up that way and then the um, the draw controller can export into the different machines maybe we'll see not quite sure yet but yeah nice and easy that way so first off making a metallurgic infuser is nice and easy a couple of furnaces bit of iron bit of osmium bit of redstone so we'll grab a stack of that and i've got some osmium i might just make two kachonk kachonk so with this Chucking in a bit of redstone and a bit of iron will give us our alloy. I think that was eight and eight. Yep, and then this one will do 16 of this. There we go. And eight osmium as well. Because it's a uh, two for one ratio with the osmium. There we go, starting to get our infused alloys. And our basic control circuits and as you can see with our quest book i did go ahead and make the wireless power as well and i made the speed augment so it goes super fast and we're down in this way now creating our own power we get another infused alloy and this will make the oh, we need some energy tablets put four bits of coal in there and then four bits of iron and i'll put four bits of coal in here and just every time it spits out one of the enriched, I'll chuck it in here to get the steel dust. There we go, all four smelted. Ta-da! Uh, now we make our enrichment chamber. There we go, steel casing and enrichment chamber. Lovely. Now there's a real big reason I wanted to get an enrichment chamber as well. Yes, hello dude. Um, with this bad boy, you can really speed up the process of getting fluix boom and boom and boom and excuse you boom gives you two stacks of seeds chuck that stack of seeds in the enrichment chamber and it turns it directly into pure fluix crystals ta-da how good's that uh, that was the enrichment chamber, so we get a little bit of iron, gold, some more EXP. Uh, but jetpacks I'll probably want to get into. We need a good source of leather though. Uh, we got three, that's enough to make the belt. And that makes it bronze jetpack. Once we've got that, we only need to upgrade it with different levels of tiers, so... I'd do that, that should be pretty easy. That's everything we need for a bronze jetpack. Hurrah! Now we can charge that up in our energy cube. I believe. Please? No? Well, you're not very nice. Oh, it charges up in this one, so that'll do for now. We just need it charging. Alright, let's upgrade it to Invar, though. That's a nice and easy one, so just need the three batteries. That makes this bad boy. Ta-da! Now that just goes to Electrum. Yeah. It's not hard to make. Electrum is just gold and silver, which we got plenty of. So, turn the engine on. Turn hover on. Hover just means you can fall slowly. That just lets you drop straight back down. That means we're not doing it at all. So, let's see how fast this is. That's uh, that's pretty fast. Yeah, that's uh, I'd say that's pretty fast. Awesome. I'm definitely, definitely making the Electrum and even Signalum. Those uh, recipes aren't very hard. They're just time consuming um, for a recording session. So I'll do them off camera. All right, time to get some Skystone. Just chuck some Skystone dust into an enrichment chamber and it spits out Skystone. Nice and easy. None of this having to get into Lazier AE2 or any of those other recipes. Making black concrete and all that stuff. Just chuck it in the enrichment chamber, and you're good to go. It is a bit slow. How many? We're only using 20 F a tick. I think we can up that a little bit. Let's uh, choose the last durability in our hammer to get a little bit of osmium dust. Uh, we'll go eight. 
That's exactly eight. Perfect. Uh, now, if we use that osmium dust with some glass, we can get a speed upgrade. There we go. Now it's a bit quicker. Now we just need to cook this. And we'll have the basis for our controller very soon. That's not going to take long. I'll just stick it over into the other machine. Boom, four sky stone blocks. What do you do with that? You make a controller. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. All we need is the engineering processor, which we get from our inscribers, which are very easy to make. Sticky pistons and some iron and some copper. Nice and easy. Now, do we have any slime? Of course we do. I made some earlier, remember? Ta-da! But first, let's sort this inventory. All right, one inscriber. Now, do these need an energy acceptor or are they good to go? Guess we'll find out. Well, it says it's got power, 1.6 out of 1.6, so that's good. Now, how do we make the different molds? Or um, what do we got? Uh, calc calculation. The aisles there, and an inscriber. It is skystone, certus quartz crystal, and an iron plate. Well, that seems doable. So it looks like skystone and iron plate would be the two main ingredients, and then certus would be the one that switches. So let's get some skystone. All right, same sort of dealio. Grab some certus dust, like that, and we get plenty of seeds. So that should do us for a start. We ought to make a few. Um, nope, not in there. It goes in there. Make a few plates, and um, well, only one plate, and we'll be able to make a few circuits and stuff with that just to get our machines up and running. But that should be done. We got to cook the rest of that off. There's some more alloys. All right, let's get a couple of iron plates as well while we wait. There we go. And put that hammer back. Let's go see what we got happening over here. So if we chuck a iron plate, sky stone, and diamond. Hey! Boom! Inscribe. And then we do the same. Sky stone, iron plate, certus. We'll get our calculation. And I just smelted up some silicon, so that should give us our silicon plate. I was trying to, at least. Huh. Got to empty this one out very soon. Uh, let's get rid of all this gold and chuck it over here. There's some silicon, that should do it. Ta-da! And wabam, wabam, wabam. All right. And will the last one be gold? Let's try it. Wabam, wabam, wabam. Haha. There's our four presses. We are. So logic, engineering, calculation, and silicon. Alright, now which one did we need to make for the controller? It is the engineering. So engineering requires a silicon and an engineering and a redstone. So let's grab our diamond. And we've got our silicon. So, we chuck in a silicon press, we chuck in a bit of silicon. Boom, silicon circuit. Okay. Now we want our engineering and a diamond. Boom, there's that one. Now, if we chuck that in and that in with a piece of redstone, that'll give us our circuit and we'll have our controller. Boom. <gasps> Fun times. Now we just need... Whoa, whoa. Whoa, okay. 
Good eye. That's what we want. ME controller. Oh yeah. Oh, you have my flux powering this one. Don't worry. Ta-da. No power to it yet. Let's go turn it. Put it over on the the energy and turn it on so we can see it glow. <gasps> Ta-da. All right. What else do we need? We need a disk drive. So that should be fairly easy. Couple more engineering processes and some Fluix cable. Fluix cable's pretty easy. Get quartz fiber and glass and then a couple of Fluix crystals. So we've got plenty of glass and we've got plenty of Fluix dust. Boom, there we go. And if we go like so and like so, that'll give us plenty of cable to work with. And if we chuck that cable with these bad boys, we we'll get the fluids cable. Let's get a little bit more. There we go. Rightio. Now we just need the engineering process. So same dealio. Two more diamonds. Two more silicon. And put them both in with a bit of redstone. We get our chip. Ta -da. And there is our drive. Boom. Now, in order to store stuff in a drive, you do need a storage component. So to get that, we do need a logic processor, which is gold. All right, there we go. There's enough for three of them. And what if we try and make that into a 4K? How are we going to go about that? What do we need to turn it into a 4K? We just need a bit of quartz glass and a calculation processor. So we can definitely do that. But if you notice... 1K, 1K, 1K is 3. You turn it into the next chip and it's 4. So a little bit of storage for free. So let's go get a calculation processor and upgrade it. And again, quartz glass, nice and easy. It's, if memory serves, five of these bad boys. Yeah, there we go. Quartz glass, nice and easy. And that gives us our upgraded chip. Booyah. So you can do that again, turn it into a 16, so three fours will get you a 16k, and three 16s will get you a 64. So you always get that extra upgrade for free if you can go the next step. And I believe 64, yeah, because it goes up further, three 64s to the 256. We'll definitely get into those later, but for now, that should be enough to get us started. Now, what do we need for the housing? Just that. Okay, that's easy enough. Boom and boom. Ta-da. I put that in the drive. Ta-da. And now we can see it's got a space in there for the drive. Nice and easy. We just need power to this thing. And a monitor. Ta-da. Crafting monitor. Another calculation press. Another logic press. And more logic press. I'll get those components done and dusted, and then I'll come back. There's our illuminated panel. So basically that's uh, the start of our crafting grid. And then we need to turn it into this bad boy. So we need two, we need an annihilation core and a formation core. There's our formation, and there's our... Oh, we need nether quartz for that, and I've got plenty. Boom, boom, boom. There we go, and then we should be able to change that into the terminal. Ta-da! And the terminal into a crafting terminal. Booyah! So, normally you would have say, that buried somewhere, and then a Fluix cable that would sort of come off, and then your crafting monitor there. So once that gets power, we can start throwing items in. It's just got no power at the moment. Nice and easy. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today. So I'm going to have to wrap it up here. If you've really liked it, hit that like button. If you've really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button so you can see more content from me in the future. And until next time. Toodles.